your servant, Pope John Paul, mm. our bishop and all the bishops, to the clergy and the entire people your son has gained for you. Mm. Father, hear the prayers of the family you have gathered here before you. In mercy and love, unite all your children, wherever they may be. It's morning. The last of the mountain mist lingers outside, but there's a cheery face around the door inside. Morning, Martin. Morning, Steve. Good morning. Morning, darling. Morning. Cup of tea, Steve. Hey. Slumbers are being disturbed in the other rooms, too. Still, can't beat a nice hot cuppa. Hmm, almost as good as home. All right, cup of tea, Martin. Sugar? Cheers, yeah. Two. That's right, yeah. Those fresh, crusty loaves, though, they're not English, and they don't talk quite like that in London, either. It's the third day of a long, dreamed-of pilgrimage and holiday in the mountains of the Pyrenees. It's been great so far, except this getting-up routine is just a little bit too familiar. What will you see? You know, when she married, right? Hey, happy birthday. Can you sing happy birthday? Where are we going today? That's the fun of our stay at Hosanna House. Where will we be going today? All those people we've seen down in Europe. The nuns, Sister Elizabeth, Sister Mark and Sister Colette, attend Mass with the group chaplain, John Placid, and Peter, the co-leader. It's a moment of prayer in their little chapel downstairs, before the day really begins, although breakfast is already prepared. Come on, Richard, you know the group by now. Everybody shares in birthdays. Looks interesting. It is interesting. So, that's what all those long French loaves were for. Sister Mark and Sister Colette are making a picnic. Meatloaf, hard-boiled eggs, cheese and red wine. The fresh air doesn't come in a bottle. Every group tries to get away on a picnic during their week at Hazana House. Come on, the mist went ages ago. Can't we go? It's taken a year saving for this week at Lourdes. There are about 35 in the group, all from Cock Foster's in North London, the parish church of Christ the King. Around 15 are handicapped, and the others lift and push and generally give a helping hand when we're all not laughing our heads off, that is. Everybody loves it here. Take the birthday boy. What do you think of Hosanna House, Richard? First night, I said, so well. And I've done for ages. It's really good. And the food's so... It's... It's different. It's... It's better than I thought it would be. Bed. Yeah. And the sisters are superb. Really nice, really nice culture. And I and I hope everybody and I hope they get more people to come here. Because I recommend it, it's really great. It's brilliant. Have you got the hymn sheets? Yeah. Right. That was Peter Godwin, joint leader of the group, just checking. And that's the most important commodity going on board now. So, can we really go now?
they've gone. And just before we follow Dom Placid's happy band of pilgrims up into the mountains, it does give me a chance to tell you a little bit about Hosanna House. It's such a beautiful place and it's come to mean a lot to many thousands of people who've come to stay here in the few years since it opened. It's a remarkable story. Problem is, where do I start? Well, in the reception area of Hosanna House hangs a picture of a young French peasant girl whose name was Bernadette Soubirou. Those who knew Bernadette would often recall her dark, steady eyes, eyes which one cold winter's day gazed at a vision which was to change her life and to turn the town of Lourdes, where she lived, into a place of pilgrimage. In a grotto in the rocks of Massabiel, Bernadette saw the vision of a young lady dressed in white with a blue sash and on each foot a yellow rose. The vision first occurred on the 11th of February, 1858, and then on 17 other occasions in which the little girl was spoken to by the lady and given careful instructions that forever after people should come in procession to this place to do penance and to bring the sick to be blessed. The vision indicated to Bernadette where to dig with her hands in the floor of the cave to find a spring which still flows today, venerated by thousands upon thousands who come here with faith to drink, wash and to bathe in the water. Through the little girl, the vision instructed that a church should be built. Bernadette had to endure all kinds of persecution from the many disbelieving townspeople of Lourdes, who flocked to see her kneeling on the rocky floor, gazing transfixed at what was to them an empty space. But in a form of words that could not be denied even by the local priest, the vision revealed herself to Bernadette as the Virgin Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ. Since then, Lourdes has become a place of pilgrimage for millions. There have been many cures claimed here, including those pronounced by a panel of doctors to be beyond human understanding. Although the real meaning of Lourdes for most people, suffering or whole, is simply that it is a place of great holiness and peace, where they receive the strength and faith and fortitude to bear their burdens. And that's why, over 25 years ago now, the Handicapped Children's Pilgrimage Trust, based at Sutton in Surrey, began bringing disabled children on a pilgrimage to Lourdes, an organization which has grown until now with helpers. They're able to give more than 1,500 children each year the chance to experience whatever Lourdes and the story of Bernadette means to them. But what happened to the thousands of children who came on pilgrimages with the Trust to Lourdes? Well, they grew up. That's what happened to them, and they became too old to be included. And so, from the older disabled themselves came the idea of a hostel so that they could come back to Lourdes. Quickly, fundraising began. The name Hosanna House appeared as if by magic. Former pilgrims were coming back to Lourdes, calling themselves Hosanna House Pioneer Groups. But for several years, the reality and the dream seemed to be as far apart as ever. Then the miracle. High on a hill outside Lourdes, in the village of Bartres, where Bernadette spent part of her childhood, a magnificent two-star hotel came on the market quite unexpectedly. The Trust had already spent three years of fundraising, negotiating for building sites and briefing architects, and seemed to have got nowhere. Here at last could be the perfect answer. The long, low building on two floors only, half the bedrooms on the ground floor, the comfortable lounge and dining room. The kitchen was large enough to cater for many more than the 35 people who would initially be staying here. The purchase price included good, solid furniture, fixtures and fittings. So much had been taken care of already. And below the house, the meadow, ideal for picnics and camping, outdoor mass, or just chatting in the sun. So once they reach Hazana House, the restricted way of life, which many of the disabled have to experience at home or in an institution, gives way to a new freedom of movement and travel with their helpers, and a freedom of the senses as they enjoy the tranquility and the fresh air of the mountains. Lake Galilee. He saw two brothers who were fishermen, 
Simon, called Peter, and his brother Andrew, catching fish in the lake with a net. And Jesus said to them, Come with me, and I will teach you to catch men. And at once they left their nets and went with him. And large crowds followed him from Galilee and it land on the other side of the Jordan. The greatness of God's creation is perhaps a little closer to the grasp of ordinary mortals in scenery like the Lake of Peol. After all, there aren't many lakes or mountains or cows come to that in Cockfosters. A satisfying day for Don Placid, their parish priest. The reward of careful planning, keeping in touch, proof that all good things are worth waiting for, even though some folks just won't wait any longer. There was the church flower sale in May. That raised more than 500 pounds towards bringing those who couldn't pay for themselves. As for the others, they were quite happy to pay the cost of their trip, to work their share, and to come on the picnic. As for Don Placid's orange floppy hat, it's become quite famous since he bought it a few years ago in Jerusalem. Stands out like anything in a crowd at Lourdes. Perfect for a spot of group satire. Don't let it tag for what a story Don't 